So for the first time in a little while, I'm in a chatty, good mood and feeling like I have a positive outlook on the day. And I'd really love to drive that positive outlook into some of the many projects I already have in progress. But unfortunately, I'm waiting for some trim to arrive before I can move forward with them. So I thought instead that today would be a filming day and I would try and vlog the process of making a few additions to my summer wardrobe. Now it's not exactly what I would call a beautiful summer day today. In fact, I wouldn't really call any days of summer beautiful because I'm not a fan of warmer weather. However, something that has made the heat bearable over the past couple of years has been making cute vintage summer pieces to add into my wardrobe. And this year I have quite a few planned, but the one that I need most desperately and the one I'm planning on starting off with is a pair of black denim shorts. Now I've wanted a pair of black shorts or pants for a long time and I've made several attempts to make them, but the fabric always ends up not being quite right and I either don't bother finishing them or I don't bother keeping them. But I'm hoping that today is going to be the day where my bad luck related to black shorts will change and we will make a beautiful pair that I can wear for many years to come. And I'm going to be doing this with the help of an advanced pattern which is number 5508. I've never followed this pattern before but I have already cut it out. Cutting stuff out is kind of like my I don't want to be working but I should be working task. It's something that I enjoy the most and find the easiest mentally out of everything that has to do with sewing. So sometimes I randomly cut things out that I don't plan actually starting for several weeks and that was the case with this project. So if I have the footage still of me cutting it out then I will insert that here. Otherwise I'm sorry but you've missed the first step. However I will show you the fabrics I'm using and show you what it looks like all cut out. And on that note let's get started. So this is what the blouse looks like. It has three pieces and then you create bias facings for the arm openings, which might be slightly difficult because I'm not sure where I put the extra fabric for this project, but I will aim to find it so I can do that. And the fabric I'm using is from Joann's, both fabrics. And this one is from their newest Celebrate collection, which I adore. It goes from having a very dense star pattern that looks almost like confetti to being less dense and more open, uh, which I just think is really neat. So I love the idea of having this gradient over the shoulders and I'm planning on using some more of it to make a dress. I actually have the fabric for it right here as well as the pattern I'm planning on using. So subscribe and stay tuned if you're interested in that. That's the blouse and then for the pants, there are a lot more pieces. I'm using a denim. So they had a sale where all of their denim was $7.99 a yard. So I bought two yards which should hopefully be enough for this. I mean, I've already cut it out, so I know it's enough, but if I make a mistake, then I might not have enough, so we'll see. The instructions for this look slightly convoluted, so I probably won't be following them perfectly, but I'll do my best. So, I just went ahead and did a bunch of prep work for the shorts. I went through and notched all of the notches, and then I pinned the waistband pieces together, and I also pinned the darts into the shorts and marked the darts, obviously. I pinned pleats into the front of the shorts and then pinned up the crotch seam, and now all of that is prepped for sewing. I was hoping to make some progress on the pockets, but they're really complicated looking. So I think I'm going to leave that for once I get to it. And in the meantime, I'm just marking the tucks on the bodice. And now it is time for me to sew the massive pile of things that I just prepped. Hello everyone! So this is going to be take two at this project because the first attempt did not go very well. Uh, I ended up getting really frustrated by the pattern since it has very vague verging on very poor instructions and the assembly process for the shorts was much more complicated than I was expecting. So I did manage to figure it out, but I didn't manage to film the process of making them. Uh, and I also wasn't really happy with the finished construction of them because I was making it while I was so frustrated. So overall, these just aren't up to my standards or something that I would consider wearable, and the video itself so far isn't really up to my standards either because I left out so many of the steps of making the shorts. So what I've decided to do is remake the shorts. I bought more of the same fabric, and I've also gone through my stash and found this giraffe fabric and a matching fuchsia fabric that I bought on a recent trip to Pennsylvania. I think these would be a really cute fit for this pattern as well. So my plan now is to remake the shorts and to also make a pink pair and to document the entire or at least more of than last time, process with all of you. So let me get my fabric laid out and then we can get to chatting. This is so nicely folded that I have a feeling this is the piece that I don't need, and I just have to sort through this and figure out what pieces were for the blouse and what pieces were for the shorts. So this time around, I'm going to fold the shorts pattern on the marking for actually making the shorts instead of cutting them to the capri length by mistake. All right, so I just changed my camera battery, changed the orientation of the fabric, and now I should be ready to film. I'm in a much better, more filming -y mood than I was the first time I tried to film this. I am just really weird about filming chatty videos. Sometimes I feel like so up for it and they're just my favorite videos in the world to film. And then other times I just feel incredibly 
boring and like I'm not saying anything that anyone would have any interest in and I end up stopping before I even really get started. And sometimes I just can't muster up the enthusiasm to film them at all, which I know is really sad and I really wish that wasn't the case, but that's just how it is sometimes. So I'm sorry that it's been a while since I've done one of these, I just haven't been in the mood, as cheesy as that sounds. Okay, I take back the fact that I'm going to cut these both out at once because I want the pink one to have French seams and the black one is too thick for French seams. So I'm going back to my original plan of cutting out one layer at a time. But anyway, in this video we are going to be talking about a variety of subjects, including the Italian consulate and how difficult it is to get a national visa in Italy, or how difficult it appears to be because I'm not going to be getting one because it seems so complicated. I'm also going to be ranting a little bit about my bank, who has horribly betrayed me recently, and that might end up being it. Though I'll also try and spatter in a little bit of information about making a pair of shorts, since that's probably what I fooled you into thinking this video is about. That is what this video is about. It's just going to be about other things too. Otherwise it would get kind of boring. There's only so much you can say about making a pair of shorts. And I have lots more that I can say about my bank. <laughs> So anyway, I went to Joanne's yesterday. So then I went to check out and my debit card was declined because of insufficient funds. And I wasn't worried because I don't keep a whole lot of money in my checking account. Uh, my bank has a savings program where you earn much better interest rates if you have over a certain amount in a certain program. So I've basically just been funneling money into my savings account trying to get enough to qualify for that program. And I had enough money on me to pay in cash for what I got from Joanne's. And maybe I'll show you what I got from Joanne's later if I feel like it, because it's still in the bag and I haven't put anything away. <laughs> I signed into the banking app on my phone and I had all of these overdraft protection transfers where my bank had automatically transferred money from my savings account into my checking account to prevent overdraft fees. And of course, to protect me from these overdraft fees, they were charging me for every automatic transfer, like $8 for each transfer. And it looked like this had been going on since about July 2nd, and it was currently July 5th, but I'd made a lot of purchases over July 4th because they're having so many sales. So I'd ordered lace trim, I'd ordered some fabric, I'd ordered some flowers for Michael, and then I'd ordered some clothing for a video. So I probably made more purchases throughout those four or five days than I had the entire previous month. So a bunch of the transactions I made hadn't actually showed up yet, and then there were quite a few transactions where they charged me that overdraft protection fee, whatever. So again, I was kind of like, well, this is fine. I sold money in my savings account. We're good. I'll just transfer it over, and then there won't be any issues. But no, no, no. I couldn't make any transfers because you can only make six transfers per month, and those transfers had already been made but I might think because they had to do automatic transfers to protect me from overdrawing the account. So there was no way for me to get money from my savings account into my checking account. And I think you can actually make more transfers, they just cost money, and they wouldn't let me make those because I couldn't pay for them because my checking account was empty. So my plan was that I hadn't taken money out of Patreon yet for that month. So I had money in Patreon that I could deposit into PayPal, and then deposit from PayPal into my checking account. So I have PayPal listed as an option on Patreon, but it's not the default option, and when you change which option you're using, apparently they put a hold on your account for five days, so if someone breaks into your account, they can't steal all of your money. It's like, okay, fabulous. Now I have to wait five days because I changed the method of payment to get any money out of Patreon which means I'm just not going to have any money in my checking account and all of these orders I made are either going to get declined and not end up happening or I'm going to be charged an $8 fee on top of each of them. And I couldn't call my bank because all of this happened on a Saturday afternoon and apparently they didn't have anyone there. So my mom had the bright idea to try going over to the bank and going to the ATM and seeing if I could make a transfer that way and it wouldn't count as one of my monthly transfers. And that worked. So my mom saved the day and I managed to transfer money into my checking account. Everything's good now. And I know I should be more on top of checking my account, but I've learned my lesson. This whole thing had me really freaked out last night. It was just really anxiety inducing and I felt really annoyed at myself for messing up. So it's not going to happen again. I'm going to be a lot more on top of checking it, but that was such a frustrating thing to go through last night. Now I'm going to cut out the blouse from my giraffe print fabric and I think I'm going to have to fold this differently and hopefully I'll have enough fabric to cut this out. 
Yay! I'll have just enough to cut it out with French seams because that's how I wanted to put it together. Oh shoot! Okay, I'm going to sew this with French seams anyway. If I recall correctly, the boss was a little bit large on me, so it should be okay even though I totally cut off the allowance I was supposed to leave for French seams. Oops! And I'll sew them as quarter inch French seams instead of half inch one. I hate it when I'm just like in my own cut space and I totally forget about the seam allowance. So what else have I done recently? I've organized my sewing room a little bit. I went through and tidied up a whole bunch of drawers. So I feel like I'm getting close to the point where I can film a sewing room tour. I know I said that before, um, and now I've been in this room for like two years. But I just wanted to wait until I was at a point where I didn't think I was going to be changing anything else. And it took a long time for me to get my previous sewing room to a place where I was content with it and things weren't really changing and evolving. And I feel like I'm finally at that point with this room too, and it's taking me a couple of years to get there. But I think it's really cute and I really like this space now and I really want to share it. So that's in the cards for sometime soon. And now I'm fussy cutting out the collar. So I definitely want the collar to have giraffes on it, specifically little baby giraffes. And so I'm cutting it out of this section. And yes, that does mean I'm cutting it right out of the middle of the section. Oops. It's okay, I don't need this fabric for anything else. I'm probably just going to throw it in a scrap bin of stuff that I'm selling. I have all these huge boxes of scraps outside my bedroom door that I'm going to put on eBay for like five bucks each. And it looks like I'm moving on in my bedroom, there are so many boxes, so I really need to get on top of that this weekend. <laughs> that is the blouse, and the shorts are all cut out too, which means it is time to get started on this project for the second time, hopefully with better results. So step one is actually going to be marking all of the darts and such onto the various pieces. And the only notches I'm going to mark on the blouse are the ones around the neckline, since they'll make it much easier to get the collar on. And it wants you for the blouse to sew round buttonholes first, but I'm just going to do normal buttonholes on this. It's such a lightweight cotton that they really won't sew much, and I think it looks just as nice. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over to the back side, and then probably use a pencil to transfer perforations from the pattern onto the fabric. More little markings here that need to be matched up to form a tuck. And then there is two perforations up here, which you fold the fabric on and then sew a certain distance away from to create a dart. The other blouse I'm making out of the star print, it was such a pain marking these notches on it because it's a really dark fabric, but also it's really light point. I can't even remember how I ended up doing it, but I remember it being really annoying. And I'm going to match these up and pin them together and then just mark everything on the short so I can go over to the sewing machine one time. Because I am lazy like that. And I'm not sure which pair I'm going to start on. Probably the pink pair, because I'm going to have to change the thread back and forth. And I should probably also change my needles to a heavy duty needle when I'm working with the denim. But we'll see if my normal needle will do it first. Because I really hate changing the needles on my sewing machine. They're very weird. If they don't go far up enough, then they catch on the bobbin casing and then thread the machine or break. And it's really hard to tell when they're in properly or not. So it's always like a 10 minute process, troubleshooting whether or not the needle's incorrectly. So that is everything pinned into the back panel. And right now I'm just notching the pocket pieces, which actually form the front of the shorts because this pattern's really weird. And I'm not gonna bother notching the crotch seams of the shorts because those line up really easily, but I will notch the top so I get the waistband lined up. Once I'm done with all of the notches, I will go through and mark the darts on the pieces. So the back panels have a pleat in them, and the front, sorry, other way around. Back panels have a dart in them, and the front panels have a pleat in them. I actually just finished making a pair of denim shorts, and that video is going to be over on Patreon. I followed a 1990s pattern, and they turned out surprisingly cute. They kind of look maternity-ish, but you know, in a cute way. So those are the pleats, and now I just have to pin all the darts into the shorts. So now I'm going to sew all of those things I just pinned, and I'm also going to do iron interfacing into the waistband pieces and into the collar pieces for the blouse. 
So I went ahead and I sewed all of the tucks and darts into the pink panels of the bodice and shorts. So now the darts are sewn to the back panels, the darts are sewn to the bust, and I'm just prepping sewing the shoulder seams with French seams. I'm not going to be sewing up the side seams until later on because I want to sort out the facing before doing that. And I'm also going to be sewing the crotch seam of the back panels together with a French seam. I've also started on the front panels of the shorts. So I just went ahead and pinned this facing. It's kind of like the pocket lining but it's also a facing for the front edge of the shorts so I just pin that on and I'm going to stitch it there and then I get folded inward and this will end up going underneath it and forming the other side of the pocket. It's a little bit confusing but I'm going to do my best to explain it in this video because I definitely did not understand how to do it when I was doing it the first time around. <laughs> so I sewed in the pocket facing thing and then I understitched it so that I'm just going to be more inclined to fold inward and now I'm going to take my other pocket piece and with the wrong sides facing each other I'm going to sew them together up until this point and it's left open beyond that point because that's actually how you get the shorts on and off. So I've got this side pinned already and I'm making sure to only pin up to the point where I'm supposed to sew and then I'm going to stitch that and then I'll be back. So now I have folded the pockets so they're right side out and this is what the closure for the front looks like. So this will be seamed and then this portion is going to come down and that is how it opens. So the rest of the pocket it is sewn together, securing it together, and this side's going to be sewn into the side seam, but this part's left open so you can get it on and off. So now I just have to bind this raw edge, and I made a little bit of matching binding, uh, which was cut on the bias of the fabric, so it should take to the curve pretty nicely, and then I can sew up the crotch seam and carry on with assembly for this project. Also, I did just go ahead and interface all of the pieces that need to be interfaced. Now I just have to trim them down because the interfacing goes a little bit past the edges of each piece. And for this version, I think I'm going to add some special little details to the collar with some rickrack so stay tuned for that. So I just sewed the binding in so now when you open it up this is neatly finished and from the interior it is nicely finished as well based on how we sewed the pocket together and they actually don't do this in the instructions so they end up with raw edges on the interior of the shorts but you can totally surpass that just by sewing it together slightly differently. So I'm really happy with this and I'm going to sew up the crotch seam using the French seam. The French seam! Don't know why I phrased it like that. And then I will be able to sew up the side seams and then start sewing on the waistband. So exciting stuff. So I'm just doing a quick little fit test and they're a little bit short in the crotch which is annoying because I didn't have that problem with my first attempt but I think it's gonna be okay once I get the waistband on. However, I just ran out of pink thread in my machine and I'm feeling like that is a sign to work a little bit on the black version. So I think I'm gonna get it up to this stage so they're both at the same point and I might go ahead and finish up the black blouse as well so then we'll know more what I'm doing when I'm making the giraffe one. I actually haven't looked at how far into the blouse I am, but I think it's a similar stage to the giraffe one where I have all the darts and tucks sewn, but I don't have the collar on or anything like that. And speaking of collars, for the giraffe one, I went ahead and sewed the ends together and then turned it right side out after trimming the corners so they're nice and pointy. And I just top stitched a little bit of trim on top that matches this project really nicely. I think that's a neat little addition. I was originally going to use Rick Rack, but the Rick Rack actually didn't match too well. So that is where that is right now, and now I have got some more work to do on this version. Actually, now that I look at it, it doesn't look like I even sewed the tucks and darts. So that is going to be the next stop. So a little while has passed, actually several hours have passed, and I've gotten the shorts and the blouse up to a stage that requires hand sewing. So I'm gonna try and do the same for this, and then I'll do all the hand sewing at once. So the next step for the blouse is pinning the collar on. So I'm just going to match the notches up and pin it in place. Now I'm going to fold the facing inward and match the notches up. First I actually have to iron the edges of the facing, so this edge and this long edge inward by a half inch, and then I'll be back. Alright, so with that done, now I'm going to fold this inward so those notches line up, and then I'm going to pin the facing down as well. And now I'm just going to sew across this edge with a 5 8 of an inch allowance by machine. But first, I'm going to pin part of the waistband together. So this is the waistband for the bottom portion, and I'm just going to go ahead and iron it in half. And when I say bottom portion, I actually mean the front portion. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw where I'm going to stitch onto this, because the edges aren't actually very defined. And it's going to draw that out, and then I'm going to try and make it symmetrical on the other side. And they show the shape of this being a lot more defined in the drawings than the pattern piece actually lends itself to being, which is the main reason that I'm doing this. 
So that is drawn out. And I'm just going to sew around these edges. And above these points right here, it's going to be left open so I can sew it onto the shorts. Speaking of the shorts, I can pin the rest of the waistband onto them, but first I just have to fold the unnotched edge inward by a half inch. So now I'm going to use this waistband piece to bind the back portion of the waistband and then this front little flap thing that we created earlier is going to be bound by this piece and that's going to be the waistband for that piece. So it's really just this back section that I need to focus on and worry about. And for this, I'm going to line up the notches and pin it together with the right sides facing each other. I'm just going to make sure that there's a half inch of the waistband hanging over the ends of the material because what's going to happen is it's going to be folded outward like this after being sewn and then folded in half and then stitched with the right sides facing each other. Once it's turned right side out, um, that's going to give a nice sharp corner for that point of the waistband. So that is what needs to be done next. And I'm lining up the notches first and then I'm immediately going to line up the front because that's what's most important to me. So now it's time to sew that on, it's time to sew around these ends, and it's time to sew the collar on and the collar facing. So while I was doing that, I also sewed some binding around the underside of the collar since that part isn't covered by the facing. And now I'm just folding the facing inward where it naturally kind of wants to fold inward. They did have a line marked on the pattern, but I didn't transfer that over. So I'm just, as I said, kind of pinning it inward naturally where it wants to be. And you want to make sure that this point stays looking really nice because it is actually going to face outward. It's going to be part of the lapel. So you want it to look really nice and sharp and pointy, and you don't want to pin the facing in a way that causes any strain to it. And then I'm just going to carry on pinning the binding I sewed on as well, since that will have to be stitched down to prevent the raw edge of the collar from being visible. And this is so much easier to do when the garment is flat. Uh, when you do this after you sew up the side seams, like the pattern instructs you to, and like most patterns instruct you to, it's way, way more complicated. There are some patterns, like my newest pattern with McCall's actually, <laughs> where you have to do up the side seams first, but I try and avoid it whenever possible. So now this entire edge of the facing and the binding needs to be hand stitched inward, which is slightly tedious and annoying to do, but gives a really nice overall finish. So this is the step the black and white blouse is up to as well, so I can sew them both at the same time while watching something hopefully entertaining on TV. And for the shorts, we are also almost at a hand sewing stage. So you just saw me sew the waistband on, and then off camera I ironed it. So now I just have to fold it inward. So the edge that I ironed inward earlier matches up with the seam line from stitching the other edge on. And this is going to give us a nice inch wide or so waistband. And I actually kind of goofed this up. I had to sew one edge on with a three quarter inch allowance, so it's going to be slightly narrower than it should be. And I had to do that because I cut my notches too deep, so they're actually showing through after I sewed the waistband on. So I had to go through and stitch it again with a three quarter inch allowance. But that's fine. Little mistakes like that are excusable when you're sewing for yourself. So now this entire edge needs to be whip stitched down as well. And I've just repeated this process for the front placket thingy. So I stitched that on and then I folded the edge inward. So now all of this needs to be sewn down by hand. Probably gonna take me an hour to do it for all of these pieces. Uh, the shorts, the black shorts are in the exact same state as this. But then all that's left to do is closures and cuffs. And for the blouses, I just have to do the side seams, hems, and armhole facings. Actually, you know what? Before I forget, I'm doing that mini Joann's haul, I promise. So I bought some batting that was on clearance for 15 bucks, and I'm going to use this to recover my ironing board tonight. I bought this fabric because I thought it was really cute and I liked the weight of it. I just got two yards, which is enough for a blouse. And then I bought some of this fabric from their Halloween line. I actually purchased a yard and a half of this at the end of last Halloween. And that was all they had left of it. But they restocked it this year, so I decided I would get some while they had lots. I'm going to use that for a 1940s style dress. I got a full bolt, so eight yards of this trim for a Renaissance project I have in progress. 
some binding for a dress I'm making on Patreon, a zipper for Barbie dress I'm going to make at some point, and I got six things of thread, and that was my haul. And it was really expensive given what I got, but the trim and the fabric really caused it to add out. And then we went to Michael's afterwards, and I purchased this llama made out of this really fuzzy fabric with a styrofoam core, and a baby llama, so they can be friends together, and they're just the cutest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Except for the matching pair of lambs that I bought from their spring collection. These are like the autumn friends for the springtime lambs, and I'm really excited to own them. And now I shall do that hand sewing. Okay, I was going to hand sew, but then I realized that I haven't picked out buttons for this project yet. So I thought we could do that together. This is brown metallic buttons, and I don't think I'm going to use anything out of this because most of my metallic buttons are gold, and I definitely want to use silver buttons or black buttons on the shorts. So I'm leaning towards black because I want them to be as versatile as possible. So I don't think we need to look through here. Next up, we have colorful buttons, which is like spilling over with button -ness. Okay, immediately I want to use these. I think these would be super cute. They go with the colors of the shorts. They go with the color of the blouse. Yes, yes, yes. These are perfect. And I got these at Brimfield Antique Market. I'm so excited I found these because I didn't think I would have anything for this project. So that is sorted, and now we just need to look through the black button binder. I'd love to use these, but I think they're too big. Maybe just these simple domed black ones would be good. Oh, but they're made out of wood, so they won't be machine washable. Actually, I'm leaning towards these ones. They're gray, and they look like shell buttons, but they stay machine washable. And I think those are the perfect size. They're actually the exact same size as the raspberry colored buttons. So those are going to be the winner. And now I'm going to do the hand sewing for real. So it's day two of this project. I definitely could have finished it all on day one. Uh, I just took a break to work on the puzzle we have in progress. It's 5,000 pieces, and each piece is a different color, and it's extremely satisfying to work on. And also, there might have been a video game break involved, but I was filming it on a Sunday, so I deserved the break. But anyway, this morning's goal is to iron everything I sewed by hand last night. So iron the facings and lapels so they're nice and sharp and they don't look like that. I also want to get the buttonholes sewn into the blouses and the shorts and get the buttons sewn on. And I would like to get the cuffs of the shorts completely done. And then sew in the bias binding, which I'm going to use to finish off the arm side. And I'm actually going to bind this edge and then fold it inward and pin it down and sew it by hand before I stitch up the side seams. That means that there is going to be a bit of bulk in the side seam where the binding is sewn as part of the French seam. But it's going to be so much easier to do it when it's flat that I'm willing to deal with that. And I think this has wide enough cut arm openings that it shouldn't uh, chafe or dig in an awkward spot by doing that. So that is on the agenda for today, and I'm hoping to prep some hand sewing pretty early on because I kind of want to watch Naked and Afraid and Naked and Afraid XL this morning. So we'll see how quickly this goes together. So now I'm just going to mark the button placement onto the right side of the bodice, I think, because you want to lap over the left side of the bodice. And I'm going to do that using colored pencil. I've said this trick before, but if you wet a colored pencil, it creates a lot of pigment um, and it's very easy to mark fabric. And it does come off with water if you're determined enough. And I like this method for dark fabrics where chalk isn't really showing up or wool fabrics where no marking pen wants to show up. So now that's marked and ready to be sewn. And for this side, I'm just gonna repeat the process. Except this time around I can use a pencil because the fabric's much lighter in color. And perforations make it so easy to mark buttonholes. I really do miss them on modern patterns. Now to mark the buttonhole and button placement onto the shorts. I'm just going to repeat that on the pink shorts. So marking the button placement and also marking Wow, look at how well my ruler matches this fabric. And um, marking the buttonhole placement. Cool. 
And now off camera, I'm just gonna cut out and iron the binding for the arm openings in the blouses. And I'm also going to fold the edge of the cuffs and work by a half inch and stitch that down. And I'm probably gonna do this for both pairs of shorts, even though my machine's threaded with pink. It'll add a little pop of contrast to the inside of the hem of the black pair of shorts. <laughs> So the binding is onto the arm side of the blouses, so now that just has to be stitched down. It's by far my least favorite task. You have to trim the binding to be very narrow and then fold it inward and it just wants to pucker and I hate doing rounded edges with binding. It's really annoying, but it's done. And I also hemmed the shorts. So I just folded one edge inward by a half inch and stitched it down. And then I folded the edge inward by three inches as the instructions tell you to. And I stitched that down with matching thread. And they say to do it by hand, but the cuff, which rolls up, actually covers the stitching. So I just went ahead and did it by machine with matching thread. So now both of these just need buttons, buttonholes, and tacking stitches to keep the cuff in place. So I'm going to put one on each seam on either side of the shorts. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm also going to stitch down the edge of this. And then for a separate video that will be over on Patreon, I'm going to be hemming this and also sewing um, binding around the arm opening. So that is my task list for the next hour or two, probably closer to two hours given the length of this hem. Last night I went ahead and I sewed the binding down using whip stitches so the arm openings were neatly finished. Then I sewed up the side seams with a half inch French seam and I also hemmed the bottom edge just by turning the bottom edge inward by half inch and then turning it inward by another half inch and stitching it down. That gives a very neat clean finish. I sewed buttonholes into the shorts and into the blouse and then I got all my buttons sewn on and now they are finished and I think this is a really cute looking set. It kind of looks like something a toddler would wear but I'm kind of into it. I think it's adorable. Uh, so I'm very very pleased with this and I can't wait to try it on and wear it. And if you're wondering where the black and white version is, I'm wearing that right now. I love how this turned out. I think I'm gonna get so much wear out of these black shorts. Annoyingly my sewing machine was too weak to sew buttonholes into this waistband so I had to do them by hand. But other than that everything went really smoothly. Um, I've got the buttons done, the blouse, buttonholes, everything's finished. The only downside is that you can't really see the collar because this fabric is such a busy dense print. But I'm okay with that because I I think it's really cool having the gradient effect over the shoulders and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of both these pieces and they're going to be really good additions to my summer wardrobe. As for the pattern, I don't think it's the most flattering pair of shorts in the world. I don't know that I'd follow this pattern again um, and the instructions for the pattern are really really poor. I definitely would not recommend you go out and search to buy this pattern because I feel like the instructions are just so bad. That being said, if you can ignore the instructions and understand how to assemble it anyway, it goes together really pretty smoothly um, and as you saw I could pretty much make four pieces following this pattern in a day so that definitely means that it's not too complicated it's just the instructions that complicate the process so that's where my feelings are in this project I definitely think this set turned out a little bit nicer than the other set just because the weight of the shorts makes it a lot more flattering than the crotch and I think it's more versatile within my wardrobe than giraffes and vibrant pink but I think that turned out as a really cute set too I'm treating it almost like a dress where I'm treating this as two separate so I can mix and match with other pieces in my wardrobe. So that's where I am. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to all of you guys very soon. So I know I've already outroed this video, but I just wanted to jump on and share some pictures of the finished pieces. Since those are usually pretty heavily requested, I managed to get them just in time to include them. So here you can see it in all its glory instead of in my dirty mirror. I also wanted to give a quick thank you and shout out to all of my wonderful patrons who have made this video and all my videos over the past year possible. I really appreciate the support of not just the names on screen, but everyone who has contributed in some way. However, I want to give a special shout out to my top tier patrons who are Jordan Carpenter, Heidi Neiser, Jennifer Pingleton, Tabitha Langston, Steffi S, Dot Cosplay, Mo Quintana, Rachel Bishop, Sharon Cyrus, and Janet Abbott. I really appreciate the support so much. So thank you, and thank you to all of you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to give this video a like and a comment, that would really help me out. And I will talk to all of you guys with something new very soon.